unexpected number of Russian army losses announced, 983 people killed and wounded per day. Since the invasion of Ukraine, Russia has lost more than 355,000 servicemen killed and wounded, has calculated the intelligence of the British Defence Ministry. According to its estimates in February this year, the daily figures reached the maximum values since the beginning of the war. Thus, the Russian army was losing an average of 983 people killed and wounded per day. The sharp rise indicates Russia's willingness to wage a war of attrition with the involvement of unlimited forces. Although costly in terms of human lives, such tactics increase the pressure on Ukraine's positions along the entire front line, the intelligence states. In February, the Russian army captured Avdiivka in Donetsk region. The battle for the town was one of the bloodiest since the war began. For months, Russian commanders did not hesitate to send squad after squad into the meat grinder so that President Vladimir Putin would have something to present to his electorate before the elections. The Russian army has a different pain threshold and an unconventional idea of what constitutes acceptable combat losses, a senior Western official told the New York Times. Also in February, there were several cases of soldiers dying en masse while having an assembly in a combat zone. In mid-February, the Pentagon estimated the number of Russian military deaths at 60,000 and total losses in killed and wounded at 315,000. That's nearly 90% of the personnel the Russian Defense Ministry had before the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. The losses will not stop Russia. It still has superiority in manpower on the front line and can continue to conduct attacks on many fronts. Rob Lee, a military expert and senior fellow at the US-based Foreign Policy Research Institute, noted. Donald Trump poses a threat for women due to his views on abortion and should be prevented from returning to the White House, U.S. First Lady Jill Biden has said her husband, U.S. President Joe Biden, spent his entire career lifting up women in stark contrast to his main rival in this year's election, she insisted at the launch of her Women for Biden campaign effort in Atlanta, Georgia. Trump spent a lifetime tearing us down and devaluing our existence. He mocks women's bodies, disrespects our accomplishments, and brags about assault. The first lady claimed the latter point appears to be a reference to a recording that made headlines ahead of the presidential election in 2016. It featured a private conversation in which Trump bragged about the benefits of being a star when it comes to relations with females. They let you do it. You can do anything. Grab him by the P asterisk SSY, he is heard saying on the tape. Now, he's bragging about killing Roe Wade, Biden said. Roe Wade was a 1973 decision by the U.S. Supreme Court which generally protected the right to abortion in America. After Trump appointed three conservative justices to the court during his term, it overturned its previous ruling in 2022, and several states immediately banned the procedure. Trump took credit again for enabling states like Georgia to pass cruel abortion bans that are taking away the right of women to make their own health care decisions. How far will he go? When will he stop? You know the answer. He won't, she stated. Donald Trump is dangerous to women and to our families. We simply can't let him win, the first lady urged the crowd during an interview with Fox News. Trump said that he had not yet made up his mind on the number of weeks after which abortion should be banned. More and more I'm hearing about 15 weeks, and I haven't decided yet, he said, 
adding that we got it back to the states where it belongs. A lot of states are taking very strong stances. Jill Biden is slated to address female voters in key swing states, Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and Wisconsin, as part of her Women for Biden initiative. The Biden campaign will also be releasing ads targeting women up until the election on November 5.